Hello, this is James Wyshynski coming to you from an art bunker in the deep south of the United States. I'm going to read two poems. The first I was honored to have accepted in the latest issue of Valum, and it's titled Escape Instructions. Take whatever your mother offers, pierogies, dented oranges, rye bread about to sprout some form of penicillin. Once you get to Penn Station, you can give them to whomever looks in need, but draw the line at pictures. They'll make a record you'll use against yourself. Take the train. It's cheaper. The conductor will say, they've had a fatality ahead. We'll be here until they find all the pieces. Sit tight. Keep your eyes off the man on his knees, running the zipper up the length of the bag. He's no cousin of yours, and you're rolling. There is an elsewhere. The ticket in your breast pocket is proof positive. Back in Boston, call your ex. Tell her about the cats in the overgrown playground around your old grammar school. Say how they arrange themselves. A sculpture of metal, rust, and 14 sets of eyes filled with a poverty that has nothing to do with starvation and is all about hunger. Give up light, heat. You need to air out your life. Go for long runs. Welcome the arrival of disconnect notices. Learn the names of birds, trees, flowers. You get a place and it'll need stuff. Nights will come when the walls shear away and the roof collapses omens of progress. At parties, when asked about yourself, begin in northern Maine in February, how the blue sky at noon takes on a clarity, the elegant economy of a higher man, with a sight line straight into Acadia, cliffs above an empty sea, fields free of boot prints, say, in nature, there are only two verticals, trees and humans. The day the Mr. Softy truck arrives, order a cone with sprinkles. The cone is the future. Bite the bottom and suck on the sugared here and now. The second is a painting poem. It's titled, Sitting in a Waffle House After Seeing Edward Hopper's Nighthawks at the Chicago Institute of Art. For years, I carried an image of that painting in my head, lit with a light so white it could give you frostbite, the Formica counter with edges sharp enough to slit wrists, a coconut cake shedding flakes under its glass dome as the lone customer hunched over the brushed chrome of a napkin holder. Now, in the afterlight of introducing the hopper in my head to the hopper on the wall, I see I got it all wrong. Not an inch of Formica, but cherry or oak. The counter edges curved and kind, and such couples as if the diner were an arc. The man and woman at the far end flanked by the pair of coffee urns, the salt and pepper sets, the suited men capped in a duet of fedoras, and the tercet of coffee mugs. How they sit, one at each elbow of the three patrons, a triangle, a communion of holy Joe. Sure, it's 2 a.m. and the ark is sailing a sea of empty streets. No one's happy. But it's that light bursting off the far wall that jazzes me most. The contrast between the counter guy's white cap and jacket and the wall's pale sunrise yellow. And in the middle of that dawning, a door, the door you push through when you leave what you thought you knew and step into the diner in the late night of middle age and lean across the back counter to tell Jimmy 
I've got some news that will change his life for good.